Hey, I'm Seth with Land the House. Welcome back to the Archimedes Turbine build. So previously, we cut down the pipe, put a notch in here, separated the screw a little bit, put the T's back on, and tried to spin it. Still way too much friction to do any good. So, today's plan is to remove the T's and toss them. They're just not gonna work. I'm gonna take the pipe, split it all the way across, and a comment was made, why don't I try to take my heat gun and fold back the PVC a little bit, kind of make a, a lip up here, and then I can use some blocks to separate it, and that will give me enough expansion in this pipe to allow the uh, auger to spin smoothly. And then I can use uh, some two by fours or some kind of wood material along the side to make, um, instead of having this T here, I can make a little cross section to mount my flange bearings here. I think it would have more success if I had some block bearings instead of these flange bearings. Um, but I don't currently, and I'm not gonna spend the money on them just yet because I want to build my own turbine out of wood later. So um, in today's video, let's take these T's off here and see about um, opening up this pipe a little bit more to reduce this friction. Using all the socket wrench extenders I have, Go ahead and finish cutting out this pipe here. The uh, 90 degree angle iron keeps a straight edge, or at least should. I'm not always the best at it. All right, use an angle grinder to cut this piece. So I've cut this all the way through, all the way across. It's definitely pretty tight there. I think what I'm gonna do now is cut out a strip that's maybe inch and a half or so um, using this uh, same angle iron technique. Basically what I'm going to try and do is open up enough space where I can then clamp this board onto uh, the outside and then I'm going to heat up the, the crack over here and see if I can maybe twist this so that it kind of folds out and makes more of a 90 degree. That way, I can then take a spacer board between here and stretch this out. Um, that's the plan. We'll see how well it's going to work. I have heated up PVC to bend it, but not to this scale. So let's try out some C clamps. Maybe that will be effective at not uh, melting my regular wood clamps. But the thought is, if I could get this piece of wood here to um, kind of give a straight edge so whenever I bend the PVC up, it will, uh, will not have any problems. My heat gun goes up to 900 degrees, so we'll see how that's going to fare. I'm gonna use my heat gun to heat up this edge here and then use these pliers to see if I can't uh, coax this around. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's a no-go. All right, new plan. I'm gonna cut this gap a little bit wider. I've got a three quarter inch by three inch uh, board here, it's treated. 
And I'm just going to bolt that to the side and then use some separators to pinch this out some. And that should give us enough room here to get that auger installed. I'm gonna have to pinch it pretty good. So I wonder how much loss we're gonna have around the sides when that is done here. So in order to get those bolts in there, I'd have to have it out pretty good. Okay, I'm liking this a lot. Cut the top third off. And uh, now we need to get this separated just enough to allow this auger not to touch the sides any. Shouldn't be too hard. So I'm gonna use some carriage bolts. Uh, just drill through here, pop through, makes a real close fit. So hopefully as I stretch this out, I'll be able to clear those bolts. Um, so let's go ahead and pull this auger back out of here. I think we're getting something now. Need to get my drill. Okay, I need to cut my board here at 44 and a half inches. Okay, let's see what we get here. If I push this carriage bolt through. Okay, so far so good. Definitely one of the downsides of a carriage bolt. Nothing to hold on to. I need a washer on that piece of wood. So I started getting in a hurry earlier. I had to go somewhere, but I'm back now. So let's redo this. <laughs> Um, I'm going to actually put this up higher because I, um, I put it way too low. Not sure what I was doing. But anyway, I cut the other one. And so let's bring this up so that it has at least an inch and a half sticking up above here on both sides. And I was thinking, why don't I cut a couple pieces of this all thread to put through here. And I can actually uh, take my um, nuts and wind this out to separate it some. So anyway, let's give that a try. Um, so let's get this other piece installed on the other side and move this one up some. Okay, I think I'm going to use a couple of clamps here and just keep this around the inch and a half mark above the pipe. I think should do just fine. And now I can just drill in from the side here. Use a carriage bolt. Can you even see that? I'm gonna use a carriage bolt in here. Just go down the line and keep doing that here. Okay, I like this concept. I think it's gonna work. Um, just a little pressure is enough to get this auger in there pretty good. Um, but the problem is I've got to pull my boards up more because the all thread, if I go through here, is going to interfere with touching the auger. So, okay, pull all that back off and move it up pretty well close to the edge here. And I think that's going to give us enough room in there to get this going. Now I'm gonna cut some of this all thread to eight and a quarter inches, just to give me enough space here to move around. Yeah. I think that Sharpie's big enough. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna drill kind of up at an angle here to make sure my rod goes all the way through there. Yeah, 
so a washer on here, and then one of these non-locking nuts. And on the other side, you need to have one of those non-locking nuts and then a washer, so it's just backwards. Okay, and hopefully these will line up well enough that I can get it through there. Now I can take this one all the way down and start cinching it down to get these separated. Okay, check this out. Both boards are on, all three spacers are in, and we now have the clearance we need to get this thing going. I may have to put in a little bit more of this, but I think it is gonna be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch these out a little bit further, and that way the auger is sitting more uh, up just a touch there. But uh, the main thing is I have to make sure that each side clears those uh, carriage bolts that were used. So, uh, looking good. Well, besides maybe tightening up things just a little bit more, I think this design is much better. So, it's a lot closer to a, uh, a trough than a pipe. So, and as far as allowing this thing to spin, it is much better. So, if we can come up with a design to bring out from here a piece of wood and then maybe have some adjustment rods like this where I can fine tune the exact position that I need so it has uh, no touching of the sidewall. Uh, that way when water comes in here and hits this, it will spin this freely and it should be really nice. So yeah, what I'm thinking is um, I may be able to take another set of carriage bolts through here, perhaps a little bit longer through a two by four, and uh, that should be enough space in there. Um, but come out from both sides and maybe mount like a, uh, oh, I don't know, a two by six back here, away from the pipe. Could always bring this up a bit more. Um, so it would be out here. Uh, let's see, where's our... Or shaft piece here. I guess I could always use this one uh, since it's the longer one. Yeah, so anyway, um, bring this out here so that this can attach to it and then use some of that all thread on there somehow. I'll have to see how that's going to work. Um, maybe I could. Uh, let's see, use maybe some uh, some angles or something. Anyway, we'll find a way to bring this up just slightly so it doesn't hit anything and we can fine tune it so it should just spin real nice and free. That's the hope. I hope you're enjoying this series on the Archimedes Turbine. This is video four and uh, it may be several more because we have to get this thing balanced take it out to the creek and give it a test and then we will start hooking up different motors to it. Uh, one motor that I've got, this one's probably not too effective. Uh, it's this one back here. I think it's uh, it's got to have like 50, uh, 5,000 RPMs to hit maximum. So, um, But I have other motors that I should be able to get some kind of power out of this thing. Anyway, that's enough for today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.